Welcome to St Bennet's Online. Today, Advent Sunday, marks the beginning of the new church year. We begin in anticipation and in preparation for the coming of Christ as Saviour and as Judge. The candles in the Advent wreath tell the story of the dawning of the light. And today we light the first candle to remember Abraham and Sarah and all those who were first to hear God's call. They believed God's promise and trusted him. God of Abraham and Sarah, you are our father too. Help us to hear your call, to believe your promises and to trust in you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, 
by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. For ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry. And we sinned because you hid yourself. We transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider... We are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. My brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you, because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Drop down ye heavens from above, we sing, making our own words of entreaty over two and a half thousand years old. From exile in Babylon, the people of Israel had mourned the loss of their land and the destruction of the temple. In a strange land, they'd wept and lamented, recalling the gracious acts of God in delivering his people in former times and praying that God would once again bring salvation. To a people on the edge of despair, prophets spoke of a new day dawning, of the darkness before them being turned into light. And with that flickering flame of promise, the people mustered courage and hope as they were allowed to return to Zion. But their hopes of restoration founded in the face of reality. The holy city was in ruins. The Jewish community descended into factionalism. Drought and crop failure brought hunger, inflation and social unrest. Corruption festered. The great vision of Israel as a light to the nations turned into hostility to foreigners and an inward-looking nationalism. The promise of darkness being turned to light seemed a foolish fantasy to a people who'd grown accustomed to the gloom. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, cries Isaiah. It's a plea for deliverance from a people who have reached the end of their hope. In it we hear the Advent cry for a salvation that comes from beyond ourselves. 
Isaiah's voice batters the heavens, seeking to reach the hidden God. Most of the words of the Advent prose come from this chapter of Isaiah. Drop down ye heavens from above, we plead. Do not remember our iniquities forever. This is the Advent posture, peering into the dark, shaped by the contours of God's apparent absence, stubbornly refusing to relinquish the hope of a light you can't yet see. And there's courage and truth in Isaiah's cry. The plea for God to show his face is a plea for judgment and deliverance. And what Advent helps us to see is that we can't have one without the other. Isaiah's cry brings with it an acknowledgement of the people's sin, the iniquities which, like the wind, carry them away from God, the knowledge that even their righteous deeds are like filthy cloths when good intentions are waylaid by selfishness and hope has turned bitter with disappointment. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, cries Isaiah. Come down into the midst of our suffering, into the places of our sin. Come down with your light and scatter the darkness of our world, our communities and our hearts. Come with your justice and deliver us. Deliverance is a big thing to pray for. It's the prayer that forms when you know you've come to the end of your own capacities or resources, when you have no power of yourself to help yourself. It's heard most often from the oppressed and the desperate. Perhaps you know this sort of prayer from the inside, from times when bad news has knocked you flat or when fear gnaws at you in the long, empty hours of the night or you felt stuck in a situation you can see no way out of. And when we pray for deliverance, it's always for deliverance from something. Deliver us from evil, we pray daily in the Lord's Prayer. I've prayed every day for most of this year for deliverance from the pandemic. Deliverance is prayed for from the hands of oppressors, from situations that are intolerable, from futures we're afraid of, and from pasts that still haunt us. And what are we asking when we make such a prayer, when we join in with the Advent refrain of drop down ye heavens from above? We're asking for God to act, for the hidden God to reveal himself, for justice to be vindicated, and for a way to be opened where we can see only a dead end. When Isaiah prayed for God to tear open the heavens and come down, he knew that such a visitation would require a truthful account of the people's situation. The light that dawns in the darkness brings illumination and reveals what many prefer to keep hidden. That's why we often fear judgment. We expect it to lead to condemnation. But God's judgment is an aspect of his love. Theologically speaking, you can't separate the divine attributes. God doesn't contradict himself. His judgment is not in opposition to his love. They are but different manifestations of God's action towards us in saving and delivering us. We need God's judgment because God loves us too much to leave us in our sin. And this is what gives Isaiah the courage to pray. For all that his prayer acknowledges that God has delivered the people into the hand of their iniquity, for all his willingness to speak truthfully about their situation, it's God's faithfulness in which he trusts. Yet, O Lord, you are our father, he says. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. And that's what Isaiah pins his hope on. God's faithfulness to the covenant to which Israel has been faithless. It's God's faithfulness and not their sin which will have the last word. 
the light of God's judgment will dawn, but it dawns to bring salvation, not condemnation, to those who will respond, because it invites repentance, a new beginning. Sin does not get to determine the identity of God's people. Only God can do that. And so we can take courage and faith to make Isaiah's words our own. We can look truthfully at the situation we find ourselves in. A world stalked by pandemic, blighted by injustice and poverty. A world in which Uyghur Muslims are held in concentration camps and teenage girls are trafficked for sex. Where hunger and loneliness tighten their grip. Where the shadow of death has been cast over all of us like a pall. We can look at all of that truthfully and not despair, because God does open the heavens and come down. And he comes down to join himself to us, not in his first coming in quaking mountains or flames of fire as Isaiah had begged, but in human flesh, in poverty and humility, the hidden God coming unnoticed by most of us. This is God's answer to our Advent prayer, the heavens raining down, not thunder and lightning to smite us, but righteousness and mercy to save us. This year has already had something of the character of an extended Advent. We've waited, sometimes with hope and sometimes without. Some of the injustices of our society which had been hidden have been revealed. Absences and privations have taught us more of what it is we really desire. We've tasted something of what it means to ask for deliverance. And as well as these things we've held in common, we all have our own griefs and sorrows and fears that issue in that Advent prayer. Drop down, ye heavens. Do not remember our iniquity forever. Thou hast hid thy face from us. This is the sort of truthfulness that Advent permits, even encourages. There's no pretense in Isaiah's words. The situation is dire. They can't save themselves. But nor can they discern God's presence. There is only the cry that breaks heart and heaven for the hidden God to show himself and save his people. The Advent prose makes this a model for our prayer in this season. Unflinching, honest, a plea for God to make himself present. And God does. In the Advent prose, as in our lives, the last word is with God. And it's words he spoke to an earlier generation in the trauma and despair of exile. Their words in the darkness that assure us that morning is coming, God's response to our plea for deliverance, and they're addressed now to you and to me. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, my salvation shall not tarry. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions. Fear not, for I will save thee, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel thy Redeemer. We affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Dear Lord, we pray for this Advent like no other, and this Christmas like no other. May we carry the glorious light of your kingdom into the December darkness and into all the complexities of preparing for Christmas. Please, Lord, may all of us, and may those beyond your church, find our way to a new vision of the Incarnation this year. Even if we can't sing carols or take our children to see the crib, Make us ready to receive the Christ child this Christmas as part of our preparation for the coming of the risen Christ. We pray for church leaders across the world, thanking you for their resourcefulness. And we pray especially for our own leaders, Stephen and Dagmar and Anna and Olga. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we hold before you all the struggles and suffering throughout the world that we have to forget as we navigate the problems in our own country, trusting in your eternal and ever-present care. We pray for peace where there is fighting and fear, and we think particularly of Ethiopia and Yemen. We pray for strength and sustenance for those who are forced to leave their homes because of natural disaster, thinking particularly of the people of Vietnam. We pray for all refugees and for the suffering behind and within each individual's journey. We pray for the natural world and the peril she is in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we give you huge thanks for the generosity in our community and the provision that is being organised for the winter. We pray for all the people and organisations who reach out to those in need, the food bank and all the food hubs, mutual aid associations, the BESM, the Cambridge Church's Homelessness Project, the Council and so many others. Please, Lord, may all those in any kind of pain or privation receive the help they need. We give you thanks also for the completion of the university terms, and we pray both for the students who are going home and those who will stay here. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, we pray for all who are suffering in mind, body or spirit. We think especially of all those waiting in suspense for a diagnosis, operation or treatment. We pray for all those who suffer alone, and particularly for those who find the darkness overwhelming. Dear Lord, help them to see that you are their light and their comfort, and that you never leave their side. In the parish, we pray particularly for Martin, John, Peggy, Esme, Elizabeth, and Mira. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we rejoice in your eternal kingdom, we pray for those who have died and their families. We pray in particular for the recently departed for Stephen Butcher and for those who mourn him. 
We pray also for those whose year's mind falls this week. Guy Hawthorne, Blenda Williamson, Gordon Bell, Olive Mary Allison, Evelyn Palmby, and Brother Michael. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us, to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. As the grain once scattered in the fields, and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside, are now united on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and singing. Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, 
eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come. of all life help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth look with favor on your people gather us in your loving arms and bring us with our lady mary saint benedict and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through christ and with christ and in christ in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory are yours O loving father forever and ever Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may ever more dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. I invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion 
using one or more of the following prayers. Let us pray. O Lord our God, make us watchful and keep us faithful as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.